this video with three proofs was made for that guy. Remember the guy who said he'll be here? Let me know what you think. I'll be here. He's no longer here. G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Here's the three proofs that hopefully took him down. Plus the two I was going to poke at him later. I have a daytime full moon. I've modeled. Proved it doesn't work on the globe model. The crux of that guy's claim is that the full moon is visible in the middle of the day, hence daytime full moon, hence the Earth is flat. But the thing to note is that the full moon is a point in time. It's in this case, it was actually 1615 UTC. So before that, the moon is waxing, and directly after that, the moon is waning. It's just a single point in time when it's a full moon. But we do tend to assign the term full moon to a whole day in which the full moon happens. Now, the only reason that the full moon was above the horizon at 1.25 p.m. was because this was Stockholm, and Stockholm is quite far north. Anyway, Wade went and made me a couple of little um, animations for this thing here. So he's basically gone and had a look at Stockholm in 2005 in December. And have a look at those angles. Look where the moon is and look where the, the sun is. So you can see that the moon is above the... Um, you can see that the moon is visible for, what, 16 hours of the day? And we said, well, what would happen if you go about 500 to 1,000 kilometres further north? Oh, now this is where it gets really interesting. See, now that the moon is visible for the full 24 hours, and I love how it almost disappears below the horizon, but doesn't quite. So how about that, that guy? Just tie a knot in it. And I also wanted to show you that this coming full moon at the North Pole, the moon is going to be up all day for a full 24 hours. Well, I'm going to call that number one done. There is absolutely no reason why that moon is anything to do with uh, breaking a globe Earth at all. Sorry, that guy. You got nothing. You got nothing except... You got me, Wally. Gradient of a gas or fluid with no container. Debunks the globe model. Pressure gradient without a container. Too easy. Barely an inconvenience. Firstly, we're going to remind that guy that he has already acknowledged that there is a pressure gradient. The weight of the atmosphere above creates pressure below, just like swimming in a swimming pool or being in a dog pile. Common sense. To have gradient of a fluid or gas, you're going to need a container. He just simply thinks that it needs a container. Okay, so, and if anyone doubts that there is indeed a pressure gradient in the atmosphere, then just check out this video by me old mate Wolfie. So I'm currently in Perth, Western Australia, at Printer Street, Cottesloe, just near the base. And my elevation here is probably around six to seven metres. And what I'm going to do now is walk to the top of the hill there, which is the intersection of Avonmore Terrace, and we're going to watch what happens to the air pressure in this Samsung phone. It's currently showing 1,012 hectopascals. Now going up 20 to 22, 23 metres, that pressure should drop by approximately 2 hectopascals. So it should be 1,010 by the time we get to the top. And the reason I'm doing this is because some flat earthers believe that hotels are pressurised. I did this demonstration previously in a hotel elevator, but apparently that wasn't good enough. So my good friend, Where's Wally, has asked me to do a similar demonstration outdoors. And here it is. You can see already the air pressure is reducing. Walking up the hill. thousand and ten point nine another ten meters will reduce that by a further one hectopascal And there it is, just below 10, 10 hectopascals at the top of the hill. If we go back down, 
we're going to see an increase in that pressure. And there we are with the pressure back up to 1,012 hectopascals. And a massive big, big thanks to Wolfie for going and doing that. I know you had to walk up and down about four or five times, but at least you proved you weren't a big bad wolf because you weren't huffing and puffing when you got to the top there on the last run. So that was good. And I was happy to see that the police didn't come to pick up that guy walking up and down the street muttering to his phone all the time. Oh, and don't you think that Wolfie just proved that there is a gradient and don't you think that that is not a container of any sort? I think I'm going to call number two already done. Thanks, Wolfie. That was way too easy. And as for that lame idea that there is a container somewhere around the atmosphere, I would just like to point you to these things, you know, meteors, meteorites, whichever one is which. They show that there cannot be any container above the Earth at any distance at all. Because as we know, meteor showers are all very well known. They show up each year at exactly the predicted time and date. Why is that? Well, because the comets that cause them leave a dusty trail in the comet's orbit. And the Earth's orbit intersects that as it goes around the sun and it punches through all that little bits of dust, gets sucked into our atmosphere, light up and cause meteors. Well, during a recent lunar eclipse, a large chunk of space stuff smacked into the moon and we all saw the flash as it ploughed into the moon's surface. So I think that is um, container busted too, don't you? You got me, Wally. You're killing it. And finally, the compass measures magnetic declination, proving the flat Earth as well. I've asked you to do it. Demonstrate it. Measure measure uh, declination on a globe using a compass. I'll take down my channel, Wally. What's that? You can't? Oh, okay. Yeah, that brings us to magnetic declination on a globe. This one I love. Now, I lined this one up to show where magnetic south is, or anti-north, as that guy likes to call it. I set up the P900, flat earth camera of choice, lined up the center of the frame to be pointing due south. I also measured the distance from the pool fence to the camera and got 5800 millimeters. And the fence verticals are 75 millimeters apart. Now, doing a little bit of trig, I was able to work out that each vertical is 0.74 of a degree, which means that 11 degrees is around 15 verticals. I counted that far across to the left and put a marker on the fence. And you'll see why in a minute. Now, the P900 creates beautiful time-lapse images that go for 150 minutes, and that creates a nice 10 second video. And any bright lights will stay right to the very end. So at around the 120 minute mark, I got my shaky torch out. Cheers, Antonio, you clown. And I painted the fence and the tall pole at the back with the bright light from the torch. Now you can see that the camera is still aligned on magnetic south. I also used my green laser, not the blue one, but the green one, to point out where magnetic south was and where 11 degrees due east of south was. Those two green lines are about 11 degrees apart and diverging. So that guy, everyone and his dog can see that magnetic south is 11 degrees from the center of rotation. That means I'm demonstrating magnetic declination on a globe, on the globe. Oh, so that guy, the center of rotation is about 28 degrees above horizontal as well, which is exactly the same as my latitude. Well, fancy that. So what do you say to that, that guy? Just tie a knot in it. I think that's number three busted, don't you? You got me, Wally. You're killing it. And because I can, 
bonus round. So that guy, I really wanted to point out what you didn't know about the ISS. So much, so much. You think that it was just a plane sent by the government that was modelled like the ISS. Well, of course, you know that would not be aerodynamic at all, so there's no way it could fly, so that's gone. Then you question the speed. Well, I'm going to show you exactly how fast it was going. We actually went and measured it. Luckily for me, Ruif, Wade's Underworld, and Where's Wally? That's me. We we're all able to do the same thing on the 13th of July, 2019. We all just pointed a camera at the ISS as it passed really close to the Moon and Jupiter, and we videoed it. And for more details on that, there is a video on my channel. But here's the summary of what we saw, and it pretty much validates exactly the speed that we expected to see. It also validates the theory that it can't possibly be a plane, because if you can see it in Sydney, and then see it in Brisbane, 700 kilometres away, in just under two minutes, it certainly ain't a plane, is it? So that's gone. And then you questioned that you wouldn't be able to see it from that distance and that size. Well, if you do a few quick calculations, it's quite easy to show. The angular size of the ISS at 0.143 degrees is exactly the same as the 2.5 centimeter H mark on a written on a piece of paper at a distance of 100 meters. And the trusty P900 can resolve that very, very easily. So that's gone. Well, that guy, that was a very, very weak debunk of the ISS. Hardly even worthy of a... Just tie a knot in it. No Southern Pole, eh? Well, you know, look, I could show you the one more orbit flight track during its 46 hour world record breaking trip. I could also show you that, that it was tracked from space the whole way. I will show you just one photo. And this is a photo that those telescope looking types really love. Dan will just love this one. This is a star field. And in that star field is the Southern Cross. And us down under types, we like to use that to be able to locate south at night time, the south celestial pole. Oh, and you can also see the one more orbit plane nav lights flashing in the dark. The question is, where on Earth can you see the South Celestial Pole looking straight up? Here's a clue. And if you're interested in all the details on the One More Orbit flight, I have several videos on my channel. Well, there we have it. In memory of that guy, the guy who promised so much and delivered absolutely nothing. Except, of course, there's one last thing. You need to tie a knot. Just tie a knot in it. And tie a knot in your balloon. For the love of God, you're embarrassing yourself. Let me know what you think. I'll be here. Till next time, keep it flat. Anyways, Wally, it's been real again. This is the last time I waste my time on a pathetic scumbag like you. I'm out. Okay, so if you liked what I've done here, jump over to my channel and give me a like and a subscribe. I've been Where's Wally. Have yourself a very good 2020.